four years for years. Okay. Or like seven or eight years. Mm-hmm. So, By the way, I've been uh, informed that our show will not be heard outside on the speakers after Friday because that's the day. It's too funny and it's distracting traffic. It's too funny. And it's making people laugh so hard that they're bumping into each other on the sidewalk and crashing their cars and stuff like that. That's you are absolutely correct. That's, what that's right. That was right when the booger eating segment was happening. Mm-hmm. It was out here, all kinds of. Now, granted, there's no traffic out here on Euclid that gets going that fast. When there's traffic at all, you pretty much got the run of the streets down here in Cleveland. It's pretty nice. Never much traffic. However, these outside speakers that we use when we were having people do that uh, dumb smashing pumpkins trivia a couple of weeks ago, we used our outside speakers. And this Friday, uh, the Mark Nolan Show is going to flip magic to Christmas music as custom dictates. And so from that point on, I've been informed uh, that it will be Christmas music out there on the speakers. Now, that makes me happy. I never wanted my show out there on the speakers to begin with, and I told them that. I said, um, I don't need people getting upset because they happen to walk by, don't know what I do, aren't familiar with the show, but they happen to walk by and heard something. I don't need that. And they were like, ah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. And so far, it's been fine. But um, you won't hear me complaining when it's all. Now, you might hear people walking by complaining. Mm-hmm. Please, please put that douche back on. Enough with the crap. Enough crazy. with the. But, um, you know, plenty. Uh, we talked about this last week. Unbelievably, there have been dozens of radio stations around the country that have already flipped to Christmas music. And um, our very own um, Magic 105.7 will flip this Friday. I don't know when, but it's a, it's a big to-do with uh, Mark Nolan at the helm, as it should be. If anybody knows what they're doing over there, it's Mark Nolan. And yeah, Mark seems to be pretty good at his job. Yeah, he knows what's up. He's a pro. I wonder if he's... He's got that television and radio experience. Is Pound Cake still taking a winner call? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I got a couple of messages on the app for him. I, I, okay. I'm good. I, oh, okay. I can talk now. Aaron Carter suffered from mental illness and substance abuse, so tell Pound Cake to shut his face. Oh, shut up. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Wait. Now that now clearly that's another guy who suffers from mental illness and substance abuse oh, because he took it very personally. What did you say? I don't. What is he taking umbrage with? That I you said I don't know, but I can't imagine that Whitney Houston being a black woman in a field that's predominantly male and white. Here we go. I'm just saying, uh, you know, they they being a pop star is predominantly male white. She, Since when? She was an anomaly. and She everyone, was a pop star. Everyone would roast her because they said that her music was too white. Who they used to call the, her Whitey Houston. But who are all the... <laughs> they used to call her Whitey Houston, and you know but it. But that's got nothing to do with They're, men. Who are all the white male pop stars? And also, could it have it, the had field, to do with the fact that she was smoking a white substance? Yeah. No, it's not about being a white pop star. The field is the managers, the agents, the producers... Everyone behind the label was predominantly white. Oh, no, you don't mean the performers. You mean no. the, that the part of the industry. They love the black voice, but gotcha. they don't like the black person to have a voice. And What about all the black pop stars and artists who have no problem with substance abuse? Like who? Oh, but you could throw a dart and find somebody in music who doesn't isn't there, doing cocaine and crack. But there, but, but why do you think she was such a standout? Whitney Houston wasn't a standout because of the drugs. Correct. That came after she was a standout because of the voice. Right. So, but there are plenty of pop stars who haven't had that problem. But they weren't Whitney. They weren't to Whitney Houston's caliber. And she. I guess, I guess that's a matter of maybe not for her time. But you can look at people who she was are, an can, anomaly. You, but you can look at people who are. But the business was different then too. You can look at people now who are pop stars who are wouldn't be considered an anomaly because they're not drug addicts. Correct, but I'm. But if you want to talk about, oh, because Aaron Carter dealt with mental illness, you think Whitney Houston being, the, all the pressure that she was under, um, she was trying to fight for her voice, 
as a woman and as a black woman and, you know, try to maintain a little bit of her integrity? You think she didn't have mental illness? I or, agree with you. Uh, that guy, that guy that? took umbrage at what you said. I agree with you. I think anybody in her position is going to end up, maybe he didn't start there, drinky, you're going to end smoky. up having a screw loose somewhere. <laughs> Drinky, drinky, smoky, smoky. You're going to do something. And that if was don't... the name of her album of s- songs from the vault <laughs> that were never released. It was called Whitney's Drinky, Drinky, Smoky, Smoky. Like she... That guy wants you to shut your face. I won't. Your whole face. I won't. They I'm need... not even telling you to. Y'all need to have the same energy towards Aaron Carter that you did towards but Whitney what's Houston. What's the fun in that? Shut up, pound cake. Nope, Nora, I will not. Have but also, but also, right you can't on the one hand say that she was an anomaly and a standout, and then say people should treat her and Nick Carter, Aaron Carter, the same. They weren't. He wasn't anywhere near her caliber. It's even more sad because he was a child, and I feel like the people around him have. If people say, "Oh, Whitney Houston wasn't listening to the people around her; she was surrounded by a bunch of yes men," and that may be true. That very well may be true. But she was an Did adult. Did she have any yes women? Maybe hmm. Robin Crawford, <laughs> um, but Aaron Carter, he was a child, not even of like, yeah, his a, hurt first hit so when he was nine. He didn't have handlers. He had chaperones. And you think all those men out there didn't take advantage of him or like the women take advantage of him. He doesn't know anything about money or accounting or, you know, nine. what comes from where they, they can take advantage of him mentally. They can gaslight. They can take advantage of him physically or um, financially. So I Bieber could have gone that way. Bieber, a couple of could, weird turns, and Bieber could end up like Aaron Carter. But it, it was also a different time, and he—I think he was looked after. I think by the time Aaron Carter, I mean Aaron Carter was essentially the first um, Justin yeah, but, Bieber. But also, people taking advantage of artists is nothing new, it, right? It's not time sensitive. But the the, the ways the ways to do it have changed, but the inclination to do it has not changed. But everything on paper seems like it shouldn't have gone the way it had gone because he he came from a showbiz family. His sister had a record deal. His brother was one of the a part of the biggest groups on the planet. I would think if my brother was a part of this big group making millions of dollars, wouldn't he? Wouldn't you think my management would be on point because I want my brother to have the best? You know, I'm my older brother's going to look out for me and make sure I'm not taken advantage of in this business by people in suits who think they know better. What? Okay, whatever. Fine. <laughs> Bye. I'm sorry. I've got to play you off because um, listen, everything you're saying is probably absolutely correct, but I must move on. Bye. I've got a thousand dollars here to give to you. Uh, it's a chance to go fund yourself, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, and give yourself some money. Uh, good luck. The buzzard wants you to go fund yourself and score one thousand dollars. Enter the nationwide keyword "check" at wmms.com. That's "check." Enter it now at wmms.com, and good luck from Buzzard Radio. You can always leave us messages if you like. The Alan Cox Show After Hours line is available to you. It's 216-986-8903. Alan, Caleb, we can't listen to the podcast from Friday. You're talking about your vasectomy. Uh, just a little piece of advice. When you do go back to take in the samples afterwards, uh, you know, after you man- handle the ham candle into the cup, <clears throat> pay attention to where you put that sample. Uh, I walked in. Went up to the window uh, where the appointment sign-in book was and set the cup right there. And the very nice registration lady uh, got super aggressive and yelled at me because I wasn't really paying attention. Just proud of myself, happy this thing's getting done. And uh, I kind of missed the, you know, small stainless steel door about six feet to the right of the registration desk uh, to put the sample in. So uh, she aggressively cleaned her desk with a Lysol wipe while staring at me <laughs> the entire time. Love you, bye. Oh, imagine that. You don't see the thing that specifically says, hey, put your samples through here. Yeah. Caleb triumphantly walks up with a full cup, let's give him the benefit of the doubt, and slaps it on this woman's desk. Take that. Why don't you? Ugh. That's why they. That's, that that's girl why they glaring at me like that. I'd be like, "Ooh, give me another cup." Yeah, <laughs> I'm way too into this. <laughs> Where were you before I walked in? Yeah, right. I mean, they want that. You talk about uh, everybody's doing contactless now. Sperm banks have been dealing in contactless for a long, long time. Less contact there is. Dealing with uh, potentially biohazardous materials. No, I'm getting snipped on Friday, so 
We'll be doing a live show on Friday, but um, I'm going to take every precaution. And thank you, Caleb, for reminding me. I'll be taking every precaution to follow whatever protocol uh, there is. So I will. I would already be looking for the slot to to put my uh, thing in when I go back. It'd be nothing for me to submit on Friday when I have the procedure. But coming back, you know, they got to check you periodically to make sure your swimmers are dead. And it will be a new era for me. Alan Katz. Super sperm. And I'd be lying to you if I wasn't a little, uh, I'm not trepidatious, but I'm curious what the, what this new era will usher in for me. So I'll, wow. be, I'll be spending the weekend sitting on a, a bag of frozen peas. That's exciting. As custom dictates. Is that, can it be corn? Does it have to be peas? It could be corn. Sure. Yeah. I think any s- frozen small yeah. kernel because... I mean, it doesn't matter what it is, right? As soon as I'm done with it, that's what we'll be having as our side for dinner. Mm -hmm. So whether or not it's uh, sweet niblets or uh, frozen peas, maybe, because I always need frozen fruit for my smoothies in the morning, maybe I'll get a bag of frozen fruit and I'll sit on that, right? In the process, defrost it with my newly snipped um, nether regions and then um, uh, throw it in my smoothie for Monday morning. That sounds like a plan. But I am excited. Hey, Woody. Ellen. What's going on? How's your day, brother? So far, so good. Yeah, sit on some frozen berries on your cut berries. That's yeah. That's a good idea after that. After. There you go. You get me. The bo- but, uh, but yeah, hey, you guys were just talking about uh, homeless people uh, and you know, the interactions that people have, you know, throughout the day and throughout their lifetimes. Uh, this happened, uh, I had a funny, I don't know if it's a funny story, but it's, it's kind of a weird story. It happened literally two weeks ago. You know, me and my crew are uh, on the east side tearing off this big roof and uh, 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 tearing off roof is a very, very dirty job. Maybe sure. Just a, I'm sure everyone knows that, so. You know, you get pretty dirty, you get pretty scrungy looking. Uh, one of the guys I work with ran down to the local uh, gas station to get a pack of smokes at lunch. Mm-hmm. And he's he walks in, walks out, and he's opening his pack of smokes to grab a smoke before he's got to go back to the job site. And this woman walks up to him and goes, here, honey, take this and hands it 50 cents. Goes, go get a warm drink. And he's like, uh, ma'am, uh, that's my forty-six thousand dollar pickup truck here. Uh, you almost door dinged when you pulled up here, so I'm not really homeless. And so they had a good laugh about it, I guess. And mistake, uh, yeah, m- laugh because he was mistaken for being homeless. Yeah, because well, yeah, because he's he, he looked. You know, we come we come off of us look like coal miners or railroad bombs, but you know he's standing there in front of his new uh, Chevy truck. And he looked homeless, and uh, this woman was doing the right thing by help, trying to help some guy out. But he's like, um, "I'm not homeless, ma'am. I'm, uh, you know, I'm just." Why did going he? Why did? Work. Why did he feel compelled to correct her rather than um, uh, accept her charity in the spirit in which it was given? Well, well, after they laughed about it, he goes, "He said, he goes, he goes if it would have been a dollar, I would have took it and not said anything." But it was ah, fifty cents. Fifty cents. Yeah, she thought he was homeless in 1960. Yeah, yeah, that's right. what, uh, you know, so well, I don't even get a warm cup of coffee at a gas station. You got to account for inflation. Everything's expensive. Yeah, but it, it just happened two weeks ago, and, I, and he just, he brought it up uh, a couple of days ago, and you guys are talking about homeless people. I'm like, yeah. wow, that's, you know, just because you look homeless doesn't mean you are homeless. That's guess, right. right, but if they ask you for spare change, they probably are. Okay, thank you, Woody. You can walk outside butt naked. You go to Cleveland Heights, they're going to arrest you, say you raped somebody because you're butt naked. The police is running it all. Mm, that lady, not homeless. She just wanted her Obama phone, if you recall. I got to take a break. Uh, if you want to text 35192 to do that, and listen wherever on the iHeartRadio app. The Alan Cox Show on 100.7. WMMS. Rover's Morning Glory. What would you do if you weren't doing this? I could be a movie.